Evolution is a concept defined by change. The theory of evolution, at its most fundamental level, describes how organisms change over time and informs us of the mechanisms scientists observe that support this process. While this topic can bring about many larger questions that start with why, the focus of this exploration will be to ask questions that start with how. How do species change over time? How did our planet become so diverse with different organisms? How do I fit into the history of evolution on planet Earth? Take a moment to record your thoughts and questions about the topic of evolution. What do you know and or what do you want to know about this topic? Pause the video now to record your answers. Resume when ready. Saying that organisms change over time to evolve can be a bit misleading depending on your interpretation. For example, this northern leopard frog, a species commonly found in Illinois, goes through many changes over its lifetime. It starts off laid as a small egg submerged in water. As it grows and changes, it emerges into a tadpole, eventually developing a tail for water locomotion. Front and back legs are later developed as the frog makes its transition onto land and into adulthood where it can find food and a mate. We can see very clearly that over time this organism has changed, but would you say that it has evolved? Keep your answer to that question in the back of your head as we go through another example. Let's take a different approach to the idea of change. The eastern gray squirrel is a common squirrel also found throughout Illinois and much of the eastern United States. If you live in those areas, you can often see them leaping through trees as they are searching for food, evading predators, and looking for mates. While there is some variation that exists in the fur color of these squirrels, most of them near the Chicagoland area where I live are gray. Let's say that our first squirrel population here has natural gray fur. These squirrels live their lives and find mates to create offspring. The gray fur color is passed to most of the offspring, but due to some randomness, there is one individual in the next generation of squirrels that has a darker black fur color. All squirrels in this generation, which is generation one, grow up to be adults and do adult things, eventually mating with other squirrels and creating many offspring for the next generation in our timeline. In generation two, we see offspring with black fur inherited from the black fur parent and gray fur passed from the gray fur parent. In this example, we can see that organisms in this population have clearly changed over time, as the population started off with only gray fur but ended with a combination of gray and black fur. So again, what I want you to ask yourself is, does this change show evolution? Before we get to that answer, let's take a minute to analyze these scenarios and ask a different question. In scenario one, we witnessed the frog change over time. And in scenario two, we saw the squirrel population changing over time. Based on your observations, what were some key differences seen between the changes occurring in each scenario? Be as specific as possible with your answers, referencing both the frog and squirrels. Pause the video now to record your answers. Resume when ready. While both of these examples show that organisms are changing, only one truly shows the process of evolution taking place. And as I'm sure you have guessed, that process of evolution is shown here in scenario two. At the start of this video, we defined evolution as change over time. But that definition technically works for both of these scenarios, which is a problem. Now that we know scenario one does not show true evolutionary change occurring, let's use our new understanding to create a more accurate definition for evolution. Considering the key differences identified between the individual frog and the squirrel population, what can we add to our original definition to make it more accurately define the evolutionary change that we are talking about? Pause the video and take a moment to create and record your new definition for evolution. Share your updated definition with your instructor and resume when ready. Evolution is all about change. And some of the changes that generations of organisms go through can be seen as changes in their physical appearance. Comparing physical changes can often hint at if organisms are closely related to one another. In our squirrel scenario, we saw the population change over time with the physical differences in fur color. 
Given enough time, these two color variants could lead to the creation of different species, but even if that were true, these two squirrels would be more closely related to each other when compared to, let's say, the Eurasian red squirrel. Based on the greater number of physical differences, we can infer that the Eurasian red squirrel shares a more distant common ancestor, as it takes time for these changes to develop. Let's use this idea of comparing structures to analyze our final example of evolution. For this example, we'll be looking at beetles within the genus Anthophagus, which includes over 2,000 different species of dung beetles. The fascinating thing about this group of beetles is that they have evolved to form a large amount of diversity in the shape of their horns. These horns are mainly used as weapons to fight rival beetles over mates. Horns between these species can differ greatly in size, shape, and position on or near the head. Scientists have been studying the structure of these horns in hopes to understand how these species are related to each other. This type of research provides us with the insight as to how evolutionary changes occurred leading to the creation of all of this diversity. As a new student of evolutionary change, it's your turn to help them out. Your task is to sort these organisms into groups based on their horn structure. The thought process here is, if two species have horns with a similar structure, they likely shared a recent common ancestor, and are therefore more closely related. The scientists have helped us out by giving us three distinct starting species that all others must be matched with. Use the diagram given to match the remaining 12 organisms into one of the three groups by comparing and contrasting their structures. Once all 12 organisms have been placed, complete the comparison box below each section and describe the characteristics you use to define each group, also noting how each group differs from the other two. Pause the video now to complete this section. Resume when ready. In this video, we explore different types of change that exist within species and populations, leading us to a clear view of what evolutionary change looks like. Answer these final questions as you continue your learning. 1. What specific horn characteristics and shapes did you use in part 3 to separate the species in your diagram? Were there any species that were hard to place? Explain. 2. Evolutionary biologists group organisms based on physical structures and many other factors. In part 3, you were required to sort each species into one of three groups. After now completing the activity, do you think having exactly three groups was the proper number? How would your answer have been different if you could have used more or less than three groups to sort the beetles? Explain. 3. The media often portrays evolutionary change as a linear diagram. Based on the content covered in this video, does a linear diagram accurately depict the evolutionary change that we discussed? Why or why not? Explain. 4. Taking a look around our planet, you will notice that there are millions of different species of plants, animals, and other organisms. Based on your new evolutionary knowledge from parts 2 and 3, describe how you think our planet became so diverse. Be as specific as possible. Thanks for taking the time to explore concepts in biology with us. We'll see you next time.